Hey everyone, welcome back to City of Truth. Today we hope this will be the very last video we make about the gaslighting sophist Michael Lofton. There are a few reasons why we are making this final exposition. First of all, I've seen several more of his treacherous videos and out of the prolonged saga of sophistical gaslighting has emerged a pattern of deceit. A pattern that is accumulating into a sizable effort to normalize toxicity. Second, there's been a surprising amount of nonsensical defense of Lofton on my first few videos and I will refute those on the grounds of truth and principle not on the ideological ground of scientism and subjectivism where Lofton and his audience play their sophistical games. This clarification will only be for souls of goodwill and most likely cannot satisfy the Lofton cultists for they will not recognize the truth in principles as we ought. The third reason I press on is that striving to be a citizen in the city of truth, it is our office of responsibility to speak out publicly against fraud and manipulation. Lofton's methods and manners are wholly inappropriate to Catholic apologetics in spite of self-promoted appearances to the contrary. We could spend months analyzing the wackiness of Lofton, but that is truly a waste of time. Instead, we will expose a few more of the first order considerations that will give form to the lie, even the lie that providing material proof is the best way to expose a fraud when in fact it is by the acquisition of principles and their proper application that reveals the fraudulence. Lofton has done much to further entrench his audience in sophistry and gaslighting. It is literally a thing that tears our church apart to teach people how to think incorrectly and to constantly claim false vindication is contrary to true Catholic teaching. The tragedy is that reason and theology has become the MSNBC of Catholic YouTube channels. In this video, we will tell you what C.S. Lewis says about Lofton and his audience. I will suggest that to study with a discerning eye the awful conversation between Dr. Fazer and Lofton from six months ago will reveal the consistent pattern of fraud and abusive speech Lofton propagates. And finally, I will share Dr. Fazer's conclusions about Lofton that just happen to be identical to our own here at City of Truth. In that exchange linked below, Michael exposed himself as a third-rate intellect and in it he reveals his self-interest, his self-defense, self-reference, and most prominently, his sophistry and gaslighting techniques. The entire exchange demonstrates that Lofton is an unteachable dolt and that he teaches his audience to be unteachable dolts as well. So let's get to it. One excruciating thing Lofton does is to yap at the heels of giants as he dares to correct his betters. He claims to know better than the likes of St. Augustine. He corrects St. Newman. He condescends to Scott Hahn and Dr. Ed Fazer. He defames Bishop Schneider, Strickland, and Archbishop Vigano, and too many other good souls to name. He gives off the false air that he knows better than anyone else. To a reasonably formed soul, this absurdity alone would be enough to put him in the rearview mirror. I would not trade a single church doctor, a great philosopher, or an excellent teacher, or even a single shepherd for Lofta's entire word salad bar. Still, I offer this preface because C.S. Lewis, a great teacher and a good Christian, gives form to Lofton's scheme and the kind of education he received and passes on. And I am sure that Lofton will claim to know better than C.S. Lewis, but as usual, he will be wrong. Anyway, C.S. Lewis wrote a short essay called The Parthenon and the Optative. And in that essay, he compares a modern education with a traditional education and explains how deforming and efficient the modern education is. His brilliant insights in this essay not only tell us about Lofton, they tell us about ourselves, and perhaps most dramatically, about the deformed souls who become Lofton fans. C.S. Lewis describes a modern education as follows. 
He explains, A modern education begins in appreciation and ends in gush. It fails most disastrously when it most succeeds. It teaches a man to feel vaguely cultured while he remains in fact a dunce. It makes him think he is enjoying poems he can't construe. It qualifies him to review books he does not understand and to be intellectual without intellect. It plays havoc with the very distinction between truth and error. Lofton's personal success in his own education is a disastrous failure. He's publicly made himself into a prince of dunces and at the same time his audience into a confederacy of dunces, a legion of sycophantic believers accustomed to nearly breaking their arms, patting themselves on the back while claiming the pyrrhic victory of vindication in light of minuscule material evidence. Don't miss his constant reference to his own expertise and how he, just like modern academia propagating unprecedented lies, suggests that no one but him ought to comment on things magisterial. It is clear that in his own sight, as an unparalleled expert, Lofton does in fact appear to be vaguely cultured. It's equally clear to those not taken in by Lofton that he remains in fact a dunce. One of the most devastating indictments against Lofton is made by Lewis when he says, it qualifies him to review books he does not understand. When Lofton goes over church documents line by line, he epitomizes Lewis's point here. Lofton does not clarify the realities towards which the words in a document point. He begins with a self-arrogated conclusion, reads all the lines and shoves those lines into his thesis with no regard for true interpretation or understanding. In other words, he is indeed literate without literacy. Worse still is that he is intellectual without intellect. This is simply another way to say that he is sophistical. A modern education trains us to be sophistical and Lofton is a prime example of its success. But under the light of objective truth, it is a monumental catastrophe. Finally, the kind of deformation Lofton possesses plays havoc with the very distinction between truth and error. Listen, a broken clock is right two times a day. There are certainly many instances where Michael says things that are true, but this is almost purely on accident, for he distorts those truths with ill-applied weights, and thus even his truths are worthless. Let me summarize. Based on Lofton's enormous body of work and his deforming education, he is an illiterate dunce who wouldn't know philosophy or truth if it presented itself to him gift-wrapped. Unfortunately, it's the same for his entire audience. And although his audience would like proof of this analysis, I wouldn't know how to break it to them that they are no better disposed to apprehend the truth than is Lofton. Lofton has conditioned them into seeking after superficial evidence that is no more edifying than shadows on a cave wall. Instead of reinventing the wheel, we only need a single prolonged example to make our points. Lofton's latest work with the New Papal Document speaks for itself as emblematic of his swindle. It's a veritable volcano of word vomit and vitriol, using fear porn and bluster to avalanche his poor audience with hours and hours upon hours of commentary, claiming it's against the Vatican rules to cause the very kind of confusion he is causing. If this was not an eye-opener for the confederacy of dunces that make up his audience, there may be no hope for them at all. However, on the off chance that there may be one or two Lofton fans with goodwill and at least one foot freed from the chains of the sycophantic Stockholm Syndrome, I offer a word of hope and encouragement that liberation may be only a few hours away. An excellent illustration of how C.S. Lewis nearly perfectly characterizes Lofton can be gleaned from the exchange that took place between Ed Fazer and the self-professed expert on all things magisterial. As I mentioned, it took place about six months ago and revolved around the question of the suspended magisterium. Ed Fazer was referencing St. John Henry Newman and objective reality. Lofton, as usual, was referencing himself. 
The exchange was a master class in confronting a sophistical gaslighter. It started with Lofton criticizing an article Phaser wrote for the Catholic World Report. Phaser responded to Lofton's sophistry with charitable fraternal correction. Lofton tried to turn reality upside down and accused Phaser of the very things he had done. Gross, but typical. An online video cannot do the interior work that must be done by soul-seeking understanding, so we recommend that you go to the sources linked below and answer the questions for yourself about whether or not C.S. Lewis is right about Lofton or whether we here at City of Truth are wrong about Lofton. An intellectually honest person will be enlightened by the exchange. A sensible person will recognize that Lofton and Phaser are not commensurate intellects. One is brilliant and articulate, and the other is a dodo bird. It is as obvious as recognizing the difference between a man and a woman. Oh wait, okay, uh, I admit, these are confusing times, but still, both Phaser and Lofton draw diametrically opposed conclusions about one another. We at City of Truth see clearly enough to recognize that what Phaser concludes about Lofton squares with reality. And what Lofton concludes about Phaser squares with Lofton and sycophants alone. Let's have a look. Lofton is clearly a defender of self over truth, and he specializes in defamation and hot takes, even though he would vehemently deny both claims. Lofton's stock and trade is in the contradiction conveyed through false claims and false charity. One of the first conclusions Phaser draws, and we think he's quite right, he said, the psychologists have a word for people like Lofton. And of course, Lofton took this as libel, even though he can't pronounce the word. But Phaser is quite right. There are words that describe personalities like Lofton. More objectively, Phaser explains that Lofton lacks the following capacities. Lofton lacks the intellectual discipline to think clearly. Lofton lacks the ability to use words precisely and consistently. Lofton lacks the ability to reason with logical exactness. Lofton lacks the ability to make careful conceptual distinctions. Lofton lacks the ability to evaluate texts and arguments with caution and charity. At City of Truth, we clearly see the realities that Phaser points to about Lofton. Phaser echoes some of C.S. Lewis's very points about modern education as they pertain to Lofton. Most glaring is Lofton's inability to employ the liberal art of logic in his discussions, apparently unbeknownst to himself. An ounce of humility might allow Lofton to learn from Phaser and possibly amend his ways, but what are the odds of that happening? Common sense dictates that Phaser's charges are true to being. An honest four hours going over those four artifacts below will bear that out. Still, further evidence Lofton's side of the argument in the last six months has aged very poorly, stunted from conception, and starved to death from the privation of substantive truth, while on the other hand, Phaser's side of the argument has borne good fruit. In fact, in light of present circumstances, he was prescient. All we can say to Michael Lofton to characterize his contribution to this clown show of a conversation is, other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, how did you enjoy the play? I invited Michael Lofton onto our show when I first criticized him publicly. However, since learning so much more about him, I've decided to withdraw my invitation unless he meets the following conditions. First of all, he must apologize to all the great souls he has offended and continues to offend. He must apologize to my promoter, Keegan of the Mountain Feet, over there in Benedictine, and to my dog, Maui. Second, he must promise never to appear in public again. And third, he must change the name of his show to Sophistry and Scientism. If he meets these demands, he will be most welcome on our show. In final summary, the body of work produced by Michael is a mega loft ton of bull butter masquerading as authoritative piety. He's a great divider and a champion of ideological subterfuge. In one of his more arrogant statements, he suggested to Dr. Ed Phaser that he stick to philosophy. 
We here at City of Truth suggest that Lofton leave reason and theology to the sacred and great Western traditions in the capable hands of honest scholars. As for us in the City of Truth, we love and seek after wisdom in a way contrary to the sophistical gaslighting of Michael Lofton. We hope this is the last time we are compelled to speak on the unfortunate circumstances created by Michael Lofton at the MSNBC of Catholic Channels, Reason and Theology. Let me know what you think in the comments below.